Lord all my soul and forget not all of his benefits. Matter of fact, that's our verse for today. If you will, open up your Bibles to Psalms, Psalms 103. Psalms 103. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Blessing the Lord. Blessing the Lord. Once you get there, say amen. And we won't be long before you today. Amen. But Psalms 103. Amen. Amen. And if you're there, I'm going to read verse, if you would, please stand. Today, please stand for the reading of God's word. I'm just going to read the first two verses. And I'll read aloud and you read what you have uh, silently. But please read along with me. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. You may have your seat. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we, we say things and we don't know that uh, uh, where is that in the scriptures. You'll hear a lot of people quote this portion of scripture. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Amen. My, my, my goddaughter slash niece. You say, Pastor, why do you say daughter slash niece? Because my goddaughter, who's no blood relation, but she's my goddaughter, but she married my nephew. So she became my, my daughter, my niece. So, but she always, because we always pray before we eat. And, and sometimes, occasionally, when she takes a bite before we have grace, before we pray, then she say, oops, bless the Lord all my soul and all that's within me. So in other words, she said, Lord, bless the food that's in me, and then we'll go ahead and bless the food that's on the table. But what does it mean to bless the Lord? What does it mean? It means this. It means to, see, because first the word blessing means is to, to give somebody something and beneficial to them. That's what a blessing is, to give somebody something in honor and beneficial to them. So when, but, but how do we give God something? See, when the Bible says bless the Lord, what we give God is praise. See, the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. So when we get up and we praise the Lord, when we thank the Lord and we mention God and all of his goodness and all of his glory, that's why when you hear me pray, I always I, 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 I want to acknowledge God's majesty. I always want to acknowledge his goodness and his grace. You know, that's why the Bible tells us in Psalms 100 that when we enter into the house of God, we ought to enter in his courts with praise. You know, and, and y'all know I, I quote that scripture quite often because, you know, I was brought up on that scripture. You know, uh, our pastor taught us when I was real young. He would say, make a joyful noise. Now, some of us, you know, I make a joyful noise. Now, some of you may be skillful singers. I'm not. But see, God inhabits the praises of his people. So when somebody say, can you sing? I say, I make a joyful noise. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I can, you know, so make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands, all ye nations, all ye uh, people around the world, all ye lands, and serve the Lord with what? Gladness, and come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God, and is he that has made us, and not we ourselves, and we are his people, and the sheep of his pasture, and we enter into his courts with thanksgiving. When we enter in his, you know, in his gates, I get that right with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise, with praise. And then the Bible tells us, now be thankful unto him and do what? Bless his name. Oh, it says that in that scripture. Yes, we need to bless the name of the Lord. If you go through the Psalms, you'll find that many scriptures in the Psalms tell us, bless the Lord, oh my soul, bless him. Give glory to God, give thanks unto God for all his attributes, for all he has done. For, and even for the things he hasn't done. I like this one song that tells us that, that you know, that just because of who you are. Y'all remember that song? Because of who you are, I give you glory. Y'all remember that? Because of who you are, I give you praise. Now I'm kind of rushing it a little bit. But, but, but because of who he is. If God didn't do anything else for you the rest of your life, just thank him and praise him for who he is. Because he deserves honor, glory, and praise. 
He deserves all the adoration. We should adore him. And you know, Brother Mamma, you, you're, you're sitting there with your lovely wife, Sister Yvonne, and, and, and just think back, and you still do, because I'm looking at that gleam in your eye right now. She told me, y'all been dating lately, you know. <laughs> but I remember, you know, you look back and you remember when you were young and you first met her, and you had that gleam in your eye, you know. Well, see, we, we ought to always have that gleam in our eye for God. You know, having that, you know, that, that awe. You know, we ought to be of awe at him. So bless the Lord. Then so when you had that gleam in your eye, you blessed her. I'm not talking about giving her gifts and giving her things. And you probably did that too. But you looked in her eyes and you told her how lovely she was. You told her how precious she was to you. You told her what she meant to you. you bless, see, in those words like that, it, it, and you expressed yourself with your lips. Not just, not just with things, but with your lips and with your actions. And when we bless the Lord, the Bible says we should offer up the sacrifice of praise. We should, and even when we don't feel like it, give him the praise of our mouth and the praise of our lips. Let him know that we adore him. You know God likes to hear that? Ladies, y'all thought y'all like to hear that. God likes to hear that. God like, that's why the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all, how much? All that is within me. Bless his holy name. With all, with all your heart. You know, the first commandment is love the Lord thy God. With how much? All of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul, and all of your strength. That's the first commandment. If we love God, don't you know God wants us to love him? See, he loves us. God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son. Y'all remember that, John 3, 16? He loved us so much, he gave his best for us. And he expressed his love by doing that. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5 that God committed his love toward us. Even while we were stinky, dirty, and nasty, yet sinners, God, Christ died for us. God loved us that much. He, loved, he created us, I keep saying this, he created us to love us. Yeah. He created us to love us and to have fellowship with him. But the Bible lets us know that sin separates us from God. So what we need to do is depart from sin and then cling on to God. Seek God. The essence of repentance is turning away from sin and turning to God. And let God know, Daddy, we love you. We love you. See, when Jesus came on the scene, you know, the, the Jews always thought of God as God. Elohim, you know, the, the mighty God, you know, and, and, and the all-sufficient one. But when Jesus came on the scene, he introduced God as Father, that loving, caring, sharing, Heavenly Father. And you know, we ought to want to bless our Heavenly Father for no other reason than just for who he is. He is the creator of all things. And then he likes to hear that. But see, those two scriptures we just read said, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And then it repeats. It repeats because his name is holy. His name is holy. That's why in the Lord's Prayer, when we read in Matthew chapter 6, it says, hallowed be thy name. His name is hallowed. His name is holy. His name stands alone. His name is, is all majesty. Hallowed be thy name. But he went on to say when he repeated it in verse 2, bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul. And then he says, and forget not. Don't forget what? All of his benefits. See, there's benefits in the Lord. You know, we were talking about work earlier uh, during the break. Amen. And we were talking about good jobs with not only good pay, but good benefits. Good benefits are those things that are attributed to you, you know, that, that you don't pay for, but they're, they're attributed to you. They're, they're, they're benefits that you can, you can have, and, and, they, and the word benefit means something, and I want to use the definition in the definition, but something that benefits you. In other words, something that's good for you and that does you good. Something that does you well-being. And see, when we forget not God's benefits, We'll know that, hey, not only did he save us, but the Bible says he's our healer. He's our healer. He's our deliverer. 
There were some things, I'm going to tell you, I needed deliverance, y'all. You know, I told you before, I used to do drugs, alcohol, and I was selfish, I was self-centered, I was violent, I was all these things before God delivered me. See, there's deliverance in the Lord. There's deliverance in the Lord. And see, and, the, and when we understand what the benefits are in being in, in Christ, being in the Lord, and blessing his holy name, forget not all of his benefits. What are all his benefits? Actually, I couldn't list all of them. What you would have to do, you would have to go through the Bible from Genesis to Maps and, and, and just see, you know, all. But just think of the, just the normal benefits. First, you're, you're saved, you're born again. That heaven is your home and not hell. That's a benefit of being saved, of blessing the Lord. That is a benefit. You know, you think, okay, well, he says, my God shall supply all of your needs. That's a benefit. That's a benefit of being in the Lord. And, and there's so many others. He said, I wish above all that you prosper and be in hell, even as your soul. That's a benefit of God wants you to prosper. Those are benefits. But we're going to go through, though, this chapter. I'm going to read this chapter, and I'm not really going to preach it much. I'm going to read this chapter, and you're going to see his benefits. Because when he says that in verse 2, forget not all his benefits. And don't jump ahead of me there. Don't jump ahead of me. But when he says it in verse 2, when you go on from verse 3 to the end, and then you go through the next Psalms 104, Psalms 105, and Psalms 10, and then you can jump all the way forward to Psalms 40, uh, 148, 149, and 150, and it says, praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord, see, because when we bless the Lord, when we're praising the Lord, we are blessing the Lord, because you wonder, how can I bless God, who is the great blesser, how can I bless God, you know, there's two ways you bless God. Well, maybe even more than two. I think I'm probably going to name about four ways you can bless God. First, by giving your life to Him, submitting to Him, and surrendering to Him. Give your life to Him. Second, being obedient to Him. Loving Him and being obedient to Him. Being obedient to His Word. Third, fellowshipping with the saints and learning more and more of Him. That means, yeah, you come to church sometime. Coming to church, being, being here, being a part of what God is doing and receiving his word. Those things bless the Lord. Those things bless the Lord. Giving him praise, honor, and glory with your lips and with your life. Praise, honor, and glory with your lips and with... Now, don't be full of lip service and your life is not showing. Don't, and your life is not showing. But we're, gonna, we're learning here that we bless the Lord with our lips. The Bible even says the waving of the hands is as the evening sacrifice unto the Lord. You know, just lifting up your hands to the Lord and singing his praises. That's why I sung that little uh, uh, flurry of songs, that little medley of songs. And all of those songs, bless the Lord, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his soul. And you make it personal. You say, I will bless the Lord. You know, I will bless the Lord at all times, the Bible says. And his praises shall continually be where? In my mouth. See, you got to make it personal. See, you, you got to bless the Lord even when you don't feel like it. Because when we praise him, even in the midst of the storms, even in the midst of the problem, problems and, and the situation, and as y'all said this morning, in the midst of the drama, we, when we continue, not let the, the problems and the, and, the, and the situations and the drama and all these things that, that will come, the trials and tribulations of life that will come, not letting them keep us down, but yet, even in the midst of it, offer up the sacrifice. You know, we sung that song. We bring the sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. Y'all remember that song? We bring the sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. And then what did it say? And we offer unto you the sacrifices of 
thanksgiving that we offer unto you the sacrifices of joy. See, joy is, 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 is not happiness. Happiness depends on circumstances. You get the word happiness from the word happenstance. You get happenstance from the word circumstance. If the circumstances are happy, then or are good, then you're happy. And but if the circumstances are sad or depressing or or, or even uh, uh, full of bitterness or whatever, then that's going to be your attitude. But when your attitude is gratitude, when your attitude is joy, you can have joy no matter what the circumstances are because joy comes from the inside and joy comes from the Lord. Joy comes from the Lord. So, and then you can give that sacrifice of praise. You say, Pastor, I don't feel like praising the Lord today. I'm going to use it a, a, a child's. The, the teenagers might say, Mom and Daddy was fussing at me today. Got a bad grade on my test. The, the, the coach benched me because I really wasn't giving my all at practice. And I don't feel like praising the Lord. Somebody stole my bike. You know, uh, I didn't get my allowance because I didn't take the trash out three days in a row. And I don't feel like praising. And then that was from a child's aspect. What about you adults? What do y'all go through? The things y'all go through, you know? I got rolled up on the job because of something one of my co-workers did. You know, sometimes we get blamed for stuff that's not our fault. And it brings you, it can bring you down. You know, today I got the news that my sister's husband passed away. He passed away this morning at four something this morning. You know, and my brother and I, I call him my brother, not my brother-in-law. My brother and I, we, we close. We, we, man, we go to games together. We used to go to the Spurs games together and do stuff, you know. And, but he had been, been sick here lately. He had diabetes and a few other things. He was under dialysis and all these treatments. But, you know, Am I sad? Yes, I'm sad. But I don't let the sadness keep me from having the joy that's up on the inside of me. See, I can praise the Lord in spite of it. See, that's, and that's what the sacrifice of praise is. You're being able to praise the Lord in spite of it. You can, you can still, you know, rejoice in the Lord. You can rejoice in the Lord. And, and I can rejoice in the Lord because I know my brother-in-law had gave his life to the Lord. And so I can rejoice that, you know, because, see, the Bible lets us know we shouldn't sorrow as, as those who have no hope. See, we got hope. We got hope. And we got Jesus. We got hope. And I've already talked about that these last few weeks, so I'm not going to get, get back into that. But I'm just saying that we can still, in spite, mama, in spite of the circumstances, in spite of the situation, in spite of the trauma, the drama, the, 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 the attacks of the enemy, we can still bless the Lord and we bring him the sacrifice even when I don't feel like it. Because there's benefits when we bless the Lord. And forget not all. How many of his benefits? All of his benefits. Don't forget. And when you bless the Lord, when you honor God and you praise God. You see, also, you know, and I'm going to, look, this is not a tithe offering message. But also when you, when you bring your sacrifice to the altar. When you bring your tithes and offering and your, your love offering and your gifts of sacrifice to the Lord. You're saying, Lord, I bless you with what I have, not just with my lips, but even with my substance. I bless you with my substance. The Bible says in, in Proverbs chapter 3, honor the Lord with thy substance. With your what? With your substance. Honor the Lord with what he's honored you with, what he's given you. He says, now honor me back with some of it. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thy increase. You said all your increase? Yeah, not not just when you, you know what I do? Watch this. And I'm not telling you to be like me. I'm telling you, you know, you, you got to judge by your own heart. You know, that's why the Bible says, let every man according as he wills, let him give. According as what purpose in your heart. 
you got to look in your own heart. It's because there are a lot of people being stingy to God when God has been faithful to them. They're stingy to God. Not you, but people you know. And, and once again, it's not a tithe and offering message. I'm not trying to get you to give more. I'm just trying to get you to bless the Lord with all. Bless the Lord, all my soul, all my soul, and all that is within me. All. And see, even if I find a dime on the ground, I'm going to give God a penny out of that dime. If I find a dime on the ground, because he says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with all the fruit of your increase. Whatever he gives me, I'm going to find a way to honor him. For every time I pick up a penny off the ground, first I give him thanks. You know I even say this? I, I literally say, Father, thank you for the increase. Brother, it's just a penny. It's a penny more than I had. <laughs> Somebody got to realize that. It's just a penny. Don't you ask value? Money is it's gone so far down that penny ain't even worth the penny no more. So it's still more than what I had. And he, he allowed me to find it on the ground. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I said, Father, thank you for the increase. What well, increase is a bit as an increase. Because that's what he said. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all your increase. He didn't say your major increases. He said all of your increases. Oh, man. That's, that's, wow, that's a revelation of the difference there. I never thought of it like that. Damn. You got to honor the Lord. You got to bless the Lord. And when you bless him, he blesses you back. He blesses you anyway. But he says that when you give, it'll be given back to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Shall he cause men to give in your bosom? For with the same measure that you met with all, he will measure it back unto you. It doesn't mean the same amount. But the, the, the measure of your heart. See, God wants your heart. He wants your heart. See, if God has your heart, your pocketbook, your praise, and everything else come with it. Everything. Let me read this scripture real quick. I said, <clears throat> we're in Psalms 103, and I'm going to start once again at verse 1, and just follow along with me. We may read all the way down, and I may pause and stop in a few places, but let me, let, me, let, me, let me read this to you. Watch what it says. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Watch this. Who forgive us all our iniquities. He does what? He forgives us all of our iniquities. Now you've got to repent. When you come into Jesus Christ, when you repent and you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, he takes, and he, you're going to see it, he, he's going to say it down here, but he takes your sin and he casts it as far as the east is to the west. That's in this verse of scriptures too. Y'all know that? The east from the west. He, he casts your sins. But you say, well, 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 Pastor, what if I sin again after I get saved? You repent. And do your best not to repeat that sin. Jesus told the woman that was caught in adultery, he says, did any man condemn you? She says, no, Lord, neither I condemn you. But go and do what? Sin no more. Don't, now, don't, 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 don't say, well, God forgive me, so I'm going to purposely go out and do what I'm going to do anyway. No, 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 no. God will punish you for vain repentance. You have, you'll find your place in hell and the lake of fire and that burning with brimstone with vain repentance. So, so because then you become a liar. Because the Bible says that he that says I'm in the light and walk in darkness is a liar. It says it right there in the scriptures. So, so don't fool yourself with that. And don't let anybody else fool you with that. So, but once again, but he will forgive all of your iniquities. Because it's your iniquities, according to Isaiah 59, that, that separates you from God. So your sin and your iniquity. So you don't want to be separated from God. You want to be with God. So, so it says, well, these are some of his benefits. Who does what? Forgive all your iniquities. Who, who's, who heals all your diseases. God heals all your diseases. You say, well, well, brother, what about your what about your brother-in-law who, who who died of diabetes and this, that, and the other? You're, God's healed him. <laughs> God's healed him. Now, see, healing can happen both on this side and on the other side. Because on the other side, there are no lame. 
that leg that he had amputated, he won't be dancing on it right now. Come on now. See, he healed. But there is healing on this side of the grave as well. There is healing on this side of heaven as well. But God heals. Part of his blessing, part of his benefits is blessing and healing. <clears throat> and he redeems your life from, from destruction. You know, he, he redeems, he buys you back even from destruction. Sometimes he turns you, he, he, he turns you away from your own self. Who crowns you? <laughs> yeah. Come on, think about it. Think about it. Man, some things you would do if it had not been for the grace of God and the mercy of God. The Bible says, except for God's mercy, we will all be consumed. But some things we would do if it had not been for the Holy Spirit tempering us. Our conscience. You know that that your conscience, people say, let your conscience be your guide. If your conscience is not seared, according to Peter uh, or Timothy, if your conscience is not seared with a hot iron, where you have hardened your heart, then your conscience will warn you, even before you're saved, of what's right and what's wrong. Am I not, I'm not telling the truth? But then once you get saved, now the Holy Spirit now enters in also as part of your conscience. The Holy Spirit will warn you and try to guide you and lead you away from sin, iniquity. But if we left to ourselves, man, we get, some, we get ourselves in a whole lot of mess. Whole lot of mess. So, so once again, so he redeems us, <clears throat> he redeems our life from destruction and crown you uh, with, with loving kindness and tender mercy. Crown you with loving kindness and tender mercy. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. See, he gives you food to eat and, and seeds to sow and bread to eat. He satisfies your mouth with good things. And, and not, only, not only the food that he satisfies your mouth with, <clears throat> but even with the words that come out of your mouth. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 15. He says, it's not what goes into a man's mouth that defiles him, but it's what comes out of his mouth. Because what comes out of the mouth comes out of the issues of the heart. The Bible lets us know that death and life is in the power of the tongue. And see, garbage in, garbage out. If you keep putting in you, in other words, if you keep putting in your eyes and ears garbage, Garbage, garbage. As I was saying earlier, we were talking about Sunday school, what, what children see and what they hear. What they see and what they hear. You let them keep hearing that garbage and seeing that garbage, what are they going to produce? That garbage. That garbage. So, but God fills us, the, the word was saying, he satisfies us, satisfies our mouth with good things. In other words, he puts a word in our heart that brings a word out of our mouth. Mm. Mm. See, because what's in you abundantly going to come out of you eventually. So, so if you've got bitterness, hatred, uh, lying, adulteries, false things in you, uh, 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 speaking foul, talking about people, this, that, and other, if that's in you, then that's going to come out of you. But if the word of God is in you, the grace of God, the mercy of God, the kindness, the loving kindness of God is in you, then what's also going to come out of your mouth? See, he, he, so, so he satisfies thy mouth with good things, with good things, so that you can praise him with your lips. Don't you know in James chapter chapter uh, 3, it says, we out of, out of the same mouth we bless God, and out of the same mouth we curse man. These things should not be, should not be. We shouldn't be cursing our, our fellow men and cursing people out and all this, talking negative. And cursing is more than just saying cuss words. There's a difference between cursing and cussing. Mm -hmm. He said, Pastor, what's the difference? See, cussing is what we call cussing and, and on the east side. Y'all don't know nothing about that. The cussing is saying them foul words, you know, those F-bombs, you know, you know, F this, F that, you, 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 you son of a biscuit eater and all those things. Y'all thought I was going to say something else. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that's, that's cussing. But cursing is when you say those negative things. When you tell your child, you're stupid, you're stupid, you're stupid. You, you didn't cuss them, you cursed them. Because what they hear in their ear and believe to be true is what they're going to become. What they hear in their ear and believe to be true, you keep telling them they're, they're stupid, then they're going to start saying, I'm stupid. Mama said I'm stupid. Daddy said I'm stupid. Grandma said I'm stupid. Uncle Joe said I'm stupid. I must be stupid, so I'm stupid. And what stupid is what stupid does. 
according to that theologian and, and, and prophet uh, uh, Forrest Gump. Stupid is what stupid does. So, but, but when you feed, whatever you feed into a child's mind, you know, that's why the Bible says, as a man, think it in his heart, so is he. That's a man. So what did it, what's in their heart? See, so, so what's in, because what you say out of your mouth, see, anybody else can say it, but when you start saying it yourself, you just think about your life. If you got, uh, if you were going to get go to college, and somebody told you, oh, you're too dumb, you'll never go to college. And you said, I don't care what you say, I don't care how dumb I am, I'm going to college. What do you eventually do? You go to college, why? Because you said Because you said See, when you say what you say is what you're going to accomplish. That's why the Bible speaks so much on, on the, uh, talks so much about, it doesn't, it, uh, confession. What you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. See, that's why we got to confess the Lord Jesus. If you want to be saved, you got to confess him with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. What you say is what you're going to become. Amen. Amen. Let me, let me move on. And I'm gonna try, I'm gonna, I may not get to this whole chapter because I'm going to try not to take too long today. And once again, the Lord, ex, excuse, okay, I'm still there. Verse 6. Verse 6. Well, let me finish verse 5. I'm going to go back to verse 5. Who satisfied thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like an eagle. Your youth is renewed like an eagle. The Lord execute righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. Oh, man, I can preach on that for an hour, but I'm not. He makes known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous of mercy. In verse 8, we ought to be so glad of that. That's why the Bible says that, that, that in, in the book of uh, 2 Peter, chapter 9, if I'm not mistaken, or is it chapter 2, verse 9? Chapter 2, verse 9, if I'm not one of them. Uh, he says, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us for it. What is long-suffering? It's God's mercy and his grace. Long-suffering to us were not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. God's mercy and his, he's slow to anger. See, because except for his mercy, the Bible says we would all be consumed. If God was not merciful, slow to anger, we would have already been wiped off of this earth. All of us, to include me, if God wasn't merciful. So, so that's some of his, his mercy is a part of his benefits. And forget not all of his benefits. Verse 9, he will not always chide. Chide means a, a, a fuss, fuss or argue. He will not always fuss at you or argue with you. He will not always chide or, or chew you out. Neither will he, he keep his, his anger forever. When he do get angry, angry with you, his hand is still stretched out. Isaiah chapter 9, verse, verse 16. You don't have to turn there, but write it down if you're taking notes. It says that, that, that God's anger, verse 17, his anger is not turned away. God gets angry at the garbage that goes on in this world. But the Bible says, but his hand is stretched out still. His hand of rebuke and his hand of love and comfort. His anger is not turned away. In other words, you as a parent, for you parents that have been here, have your children ever made you angry? Anybody see your children never made them angry? Okay, I don't see nobody <laughs> saying, man, sometimes, boy, them children get on our last nerve. You know, not, not just on your nerve, but on your mm, when you say, boy, it hadn't been for the grace of God, I might take you out of here today. But he says, God is angry at his children. But at the same time, your hand is stretched out. Once again, hand of rebuke. Because rebuke is loving. And the hand of love and, and, and comfort. See, see, God, the Bible says that God chastised. What does chastise mean? It means he whooped their butt. 
God chastised. He rebuked him. He chastised those he loved. As a parent, have you ever had to pop your little child on the leg or on the hand or fuss at them about something or give them time out, ground them, take their cell phones away, you know, whatever the case may be. Sit them down and say, don't you move. You, you chastise those you love. Why do you, why do you chastise? Because you love them. Because you don't want them to think wrong is okay. And if they do something wrong, you want to do what God does. He chastised those he loved. His hand is stretched out still. Both in, in, it's all in love, but in rebuke and in, and, and caressing. See, that's love. And love and caressing. God, he says, though his anger is not turned away, his hand is stretched out still. God said, come to me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you. Come to me, my child. Come to me, God, I love you. Let me put my arms around you. Let me embrace you. Let me comfort you. But when you're cutting up, he said, let me slap you upside your head one or two times. Now, maybe he doesn't say it like this, but he said, let me spank you. Let me chastise you. Because with chastisement comes correction. That's the chast part of the chastisement is the punishment for what you did wrong. But the correction part is that now after he had Correct, or punished you for what you did wrong. The correction comes through now. He sets you on the right path. He gives you His Holy Spirit to tell you, "Don't do this and don't do this. go this way, go that way." To try to lead you into righteousness. Amen. Amen. As we saw up earlier, He leads us into righteousness. Amen. And so, verse nine it says, "And He will not always chide, neither will He keep His anger forever. His anger is not forever, because He." <clears throat> He has, has not dealt with us after our sin, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. See, because the, the wages of sin is what, everybody? Death. The wages of sin is death. So, so when you look at it, man, this is a benefit of blessing the Lord, because he has not dealt with me after my sin. Because if he would deal with us right now, after our sin, once again, except for his mercy, Except for his mercy, we would all be consumed. We'd be burned up right now. So, and he says, or even reward us, the reward of iniquity and sin is death. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Verse 11. For as, as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. Now, he has mercy on the earth right now of all men, but he has a greater mercy and grace for those who love him and fear him. A greater mercy and grace. Far as, here's that scripture I was telling you, verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he, reward, he, he removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pitied his children, so the Lord pity them that fear him. We're going to stop right there. I bid you to please, well, read the rest of the chapter, but I am going to jump right down to the last verse. Last, in the last, matter of fact, the last three verses, verse 20, 21, and 22, because it repeats what it says up in verse 1. Bless the Lord, ye his angels. Now he's telling the angels, even bless him that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. The angels move out, they hearken to the voice of God's word. When you're praying and you pray God's word, why y'all think Pastor Will, when he pray, he prays according to the scriptures? I don't just pray anything. I, and, and you can talk to God and, and just tell God your heart. You can do that. But once, you, as you get more into the word, God says in his word, bring my word back unto my remembrance. Not that God forgets. He wants to make sure you know what he says. Because, see, how do you know God's promises How do you if you don't ever read them? How do you know somebody's will if you don't read their will? See, I have a will, and, I, and, I, and all my children know that I have a will. And all of them know what's in the will. Because I share it with them. Even before I die, I've already shared my will with them. Now, I can change my will if I wish, but right now, will's will is what will's will will. <laughs> so, 
I told you I wanted to go have a little fun today. <laughs> so bless the Lord all over my soul. So he says, look here. He says, but let me go on. And I'm about done. I'm about done for the day. And his commandments hearken unto the voice. They hearken unto the voice of God's word. Then he says again, verse 21. Bless ye the Lord, all his host, ye ministers of him, of his, that do his pleasure. So even me as a pastor, I need to bless the Lord because I do his will. But not just me, you too. Don't you know you are ministers? Look me, pastor, I ain't got no calling like that. You're still ministers. The Bible calls us all ministers of righteousness. We all are ministers. Of, you can minister to somebody, God's goodness, His mercy, His grace, and righteousness. Those who do His pleasure, who do God's will. And then, bottom line, back down to verse 22, and we're going to close here. Bless the Lord, all His works, in all places of His dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Everywhere. Bless God for all that he has done. Bless him for the stars in the sky. Bless him for the rain. Bless him for even for, for the trouble that you find. You know, the Bible says, praise God in all things, not necessarily for all things. You know, man, a mosquito bit me. Praise the Lord. No, I'm not going to praise the Lord for the mosquito bite, but I'm going to praise the Lord even though I got the mosquito bite. You get that? You get the revelation of the difference? Man, a hammer fell on my foot. Ah, broke my big toe. Praise the Lord. I ain't praising him for the broke toe, but I'm praising him in spite of the broke toe. Do you hear what I'm saying? Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Then once again, bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. God is everywhere. So everywhere you are, you are to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Let my soul, let, my, let me give God the fruit of my lips, the praises of my, of, of my whole being. That's why, you know, even though I make a joyful noise, I'm not a singer, I'm, I, I, I won't ever claim to be a singer, but I love to sing because I love to praise the Lord with my mouth. I love to praise the Lord on the instruments, as the Bible says in one, Psalms 150, on the high-sounding instruments, the cymbals and the guitar. I can't play the guitar, but I, I'll try. I'll scrum and I'll hear some bad notes. But I want to bless the Lord with all that. I, mean, I praise him in the dance. Every now and then you'll see me pick up a little step, you know. You know, I may not do it like you do it, uh, but I'll praise him in my dance. I'll lift up my hand unto the Lord and, and, and wave my hands unto the Lord and give him that even sacrifice. I bless the Lord with all my soul. And all that is within me, I'll bless his holy name. And I'll bless the Lord, oh my soul, and I won't forget. See, some people forget the benefits. I won't forget all of his benefits. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's pray. Hallelujah. Father God.